Oh, this is Halo 5 Tutor with another Halo 5 multiplayer gameplay commentary. As always, I'm bringing you the tips and tricks that you need to step up your game and take it to the next level. I'm going to help you win more often and have more fun while you're doing it. So let's dive right in. I'm playing a Slayer game type on the map Fathom. This is with random teammates, random opponents, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I was just starting to get comfortable with this map and kind of with the feel of the game in general as I came into this particular game. I don't know, I just had a good feeling about it. I was feeling loose and it turned out to be a pretty good game. I start off things with the first strike medal. You're going to see that in just a second. Uh, I, I just noticed the opponents tended to come straight across to this side of the map. I felt like I was going to have an opportunity to get a kill there and worked out well. By the end of the game, I think I've got 18 kills and something like 7 deaths, so well over a, a 2 on my kill-death ratio, so I was happy about that. Anytime I can get above a 2, I'm happy. Uh, I wanted to start this video off with a poll question before I get into all my tips and tricks and ideas. I wanted to hear what your thoughts and feelings are about Halo. Uh, about Halo 5 sp specifically, certainly if you've played it, even if you haven't, you've watched the videos, what do you think? What do you like about the game if you have played it? What are you looking forward to if you haven't played it yet? Uh, what, are, what are the tips and ideas that you've come up with so far that are working well for you? What are your favorite game types? I would love to hear these things, uh, and not only me, but there's a lot of people that come to my channel looking for a Halo community, right? They come here, they want to watch the videos, they want to learn about Halo, they want to have fun. And so many of you uh, have these really brilliant ideas. I learned so much from, e from each and every one of you. And just because you don't have a big uh, popular YouTube channel doesn't mean you don't have fantastic things to say. And so I want to hear some of those fantastic things down in the comments below in this video so that all of our viewers can enjoy and appreciate you know, the ideas that you have and the thoughts and feelings that you've had about the game. And we can all kind of have a Halo community here so that people can come here and share and exchange ideas. So I want you guys to please use the comment section of this video so that everybody can become involved. Now, what I'm doing here is I want to control the, the top center of the map, and I want to control the power weapons. In this particular game, there's really only one power weapon, which is the rail gun, and it spawns right up there at the top. And throughout the bulk of the game, I am able to control the rail gun, which gives our team a very strong advantage. I'm not especially good with it, but I do manage to get five or six kills with that weapon, which is, which is helpful. It has excellent range, it's a one-shot kill, it's very powerful, just takes a little bit of time to charge up. So you want to kind of anticipate where your opponents are going to be and try to line that shot up at the right time. It takes a little bit of practice, but not too hard. Now, it can be difficult to anticipate the movement of your opponents because I've noticed in Halo 5 that the radar has shrunk dramatically much much smaller than in previous games it, uh, you, know, you know the the distance between being off the radar and being close enough to beat your opponent down is about a half a second I mean it's that fast you can be off the radar one second and then a half a second later you're beating down your opponent or your opponent uh, is beating down you so it's you know, it, it changes the dynamic of the game quite a bit. If you came to rely on your radar in previous Halo franchises, that's not going to be the case here. It, it's practically useless. I'll be honest with you, it's practically useless. There's been plenty of times when I feel like I was sitting pretty, and then I'm getting assassinated. And, and I, you know, nothing came up. And it wasn't somebody camping, it was just somebody sprinted right up to me, used that little extra burst of thrust, and took me out in about a half a second. It's, it can be that fast. So there's a couple tips I want to give you with, with that in mind, with the radar uh, diameter, with the radius being shrunk down, there's a few things that you can do. Number one, you want to continue to be aware of your surroundings. You can't rely on the radar, so you need to continue to look around, especially if you're staying in one place like I am right here. I'm trying to control the top of the map because I have uh, an excellent vantage point here, lots of good escape routes, the power weapon spawns up there. So I wanted to control that area as much as I could. Because I was doing that, I wanted to continue to look around 
check your six, as they say, which means look behind you, continue to spin around, continue to look at all angles uh, if you're staying in one place. Now, the other, the other approach you can take is if you continue to move around, it can be more difficult for somebody to come up behind you if you continue to move around, especially if you're sticking with your teammates. That's why teamwork in this game is more important than ever. Because if you're all out there on your own, somebody can, can come up behind you, even with the radar, and they can take you down before you even know what hit you. But if you're in a crowd with your teammates, that's practically impossible to do. It's very, very difficult to get ambushed when you're together with your team. So that's something that I was doing throughout this game, is although I was trying to control the top, I was keeping an eye on my teammates' tags throughout the entire game. And any time I saw a tag color change, I was always looking over in that direction to see if I could lay a couple extra shots in, support my teammates, get some team shots. Here you can see I continue to swivel around. I keep checking every different angle, make sure nobody's coming up behind me. Uh, and the other thing that that is great about being up high is that, see, you can escape quite easily like I was there. I got a couple shots on me. I'm able to fall back very, very easily. If the reverse was true, if I got a couple shots on him while he was down on the ground, it would have been very, very difficult for him to run and hide because I could have just jumped down and chased him which isn't always a great idea to chase, but <laughs> sometimes it works out. So you can see here, I am controlling the top, I'm controlling this power weapon. And like I said, uh, you know, I was able to get about 18 kills and seven deaths, so a pretty nice ratio. And you ought to really have a number in your head that long-term, uh, this is the kill-death ratio that you wanna have, which, uh, you know, it should at least be above one. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with that. If your kill death spread isn't above one, that should be our goal, right? Which means you get as many kills as you do deaths. And every game can be different. Maybe some games you get more than others. But overall, as your average, you need to be averaging at least one. So that's something to keep in mind. If you feel like you're not averaging one, um, sometimes the easiest thing to do is to improve your defense. Because improving offense takes time, takes practice, takes skill. But improving defense can be done very, very quickly. Now I'll go over some defensive ideas in future videos, but if you feel like your kill death spread is not where you want it to be, maybe consider it's not a problem with your offense. Maybe you can scale back on the de or you know improve the defense and scale back on some of your deaths. That's one idea. There's a check on my score there. I think I'm at 50. What was that? 15 and five or something like that. So here I get a nice strafing motion, nice nice uh, headshot. Um, Let's see, before time runs out here, I've got so many things that I wanted to share. Let me think of what else. So, I did want to cover the, the sprinting ability because things have changed a little bit with the sprinting ability. For starters, it's always on. You can sprint as long as you want to. It never runs out, which I actually really like. I don't think it's overpowered. I just think it gives you the ability to move around the map a little bit better, especially on big maps. So I like the always on sprint ability. Uh, personally, I like it. Now there's a couple caveats. When you're sprinting, your shield will not recharge. So if you feel like uh, you're in a relatively safe area but your shields are down, don't continue sprinting around because your shield isn't gonna come up. And eventually you're gonna come around a corner with those shields down and you're gonna get one shot in the face. So if your shields are down, you find a safe place and quit sprinting. You don't need to stop moving altogether, but if you're sprinting, your shields will not recharge. That's something important to keep in mind. Another thing about sprinting is that when you're being shot, it slows you down and prevents you from sprinting. And so, uh, especially with so many people using the assault rifles, if you're getting shot in the back, I, so many times I've tried to sprint out of that situation and it doesn't work. So keep that in mind as well. If you're uh, in a in a high, uh, an area where there's a lot of action going on, you're, there's a lot of shooting, you may not be able to run through that situation or run out of that situation. So keep that in mind as you're playing. Uh, things are, we're about to wrap up here. So I wanted to thank you all for watching today. Again, please make sure to leave comments down below. I want everyone to share their ideas about Halo, especially Halo 5, but any, you know, all the games as they compare and so forth. 
I want to hear your ideas, what you think, what you like, what you don't like. And uh, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe, give the video a thumb up, share it with your friends, put it on your channel, whatever the case may be. I've got a lot of uh, additional content coming on the way. Uh, I'm, I'm just still scratching the surface of this game. There's so many things I want to share with you. You don't want to miss a video, so make sure you're subscribed and checking back every day. I'm going to be playing a lot over the weekend, so may have an open game night, which I, I've had in the past, where you can come and play with me and my friends. We'll play a big open game. It's a lot of fun. So keep your eyes and ears open for that as well. This is Halo 5 Tutor signing out. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.